so many are hurting. So many, Lord, some of them on their telephone bill to listen. Some can some can hardly pay the internet bill to listen. Some are Lord are struggling right now with housing issues, food, job issues. Lord, I pray that they will to get right with you. And Lord, uh, hear and answer our, our prayers for them and for everybody. Sound of we pray that in the end, lost souls will be saved, Christians will be revived, your holy name glorified in Jesus Christ exalted. In Jesus Christ's name. We pray for sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the How to Stay and Survive the Coronavirus Plague Briefing. Podcast. This is episode number 67. I didn't know it was that high. Uh, my name is Daniel White, the third president of God Society International. I was walk contrary unto me. Not hearken on time more your God is hearken and big on Suffering are divine chastisements to correct, amend, and bring them repentance. God would visit obstinate impenitence with new grievous plagues. And in case you don't understand what's going on, you're not out of way. That's what you're in right now. You're in a plague. A plague complicated. You can wake up in the morning and say, I want to go somewhere, but you can't. I want to eat at this restaurant. But if you're wise, you say, I won't. You see, this, this distancing and six feet away and mask and gloves and plastic forks and throwaway menus. And to me, the food is not worth going through all of that. I, I miss my restaurants. But if I got to go, if I got to stop at the door and stand in line and I got to put hand sanitizer on, then put some gloves on, and then stay away from six feet from the other person and wait my turn and go sit at a table and there's three or four tables around me that there's nobody can sit there and uh, a man comes out, a waiter or a, wait, a woman comes out, preferably a waitress. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care for male waiters because men are nasty. I don't care if you like it or not. Men are nasty. I know they are. So you've never been in a man's bathroom. Men are nasty. Do you hear me? And I, I hear from women that women are nasty too, but I don't know about that uh, that much. But uh, there, are women, there are men who are nasty. I don't want no male waiter. Anyway, um, female waiter comes out. she got a mask on. She's got gloves. Well, <laughs> to me, that's stupid. 
Why would you want to go and go and subject yourself to this? You got a mask on. You got to pull your mask on. You get spaghetti sauce on your mask. It's craziness. I, I don't have time for that. I'd rather just get make my own meal. One of my favorite restaurants is Chipotle. Now, we're doing the Daniel Fast right now, but we're making our own vegetarian. We did it the other day. We're doing it again today. Our own vegetarian, a vegan, vegan uh, Chipotle bowl. And I'm looking forward to it because I'm hungry right now. I love Chipotle. I, I'd rather go there and get my stuff because they got a vegetarian, vegan thing going on down there as well. But I can't. I can't. <laughs> I have not been to a restaurant in three months. I have not been in anybody's church in three months. I don't recommend you do it either. I have not been in a hospital. I have doctors, and eye doctors, and people that I, I, I'm supposed to see. Uh, and my health care is paid for through the veterans, the VA. And they contact me to come, and I, I don't know, I guess. They wanted their money from the VA or whatever, but I, they, they, I, I'm not going. I'm not going into a cesspool of germs and 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 and, and uh, viruses. I don't know what these people have. I'm not, I'm not going to a doctor's office. But anyway, people, be careful where you go because people are dying as I'm going to read to you in a few minutes. So what is the solution for us when we have a plague on us? We need to repent. Now, here's the good news. Here's what I love about God. Now, God wants all of us to repent. God wants everybody, and, and, and please understand, the plague is against God's people. Other this collateral damage, other people are being impacted by it. But the plague is, is sitting down like a hurricane. The eye is, is, is all on top of God's people. Whether you like it or not, oh, well, I don't believe that your theology is messed up. You cannot be the church and talking about splitting the, the denomination, not on any other sin, but the abomination of homosexuality and expect God to just sit back and let you do that. You cannot be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and have a so-called married man married to a man in the pulpit. And you, it's okay with, with these pastors. They go along to get along. And then they encourage the presidents, the last two presidents, to go ahead on and do their evil. Now the whole country is messed up. Because that is stupid. It's not only sinful, it's stupid to do that. Even J.K. Rowling came out and said, y'all just talking stupid. You LGBT, we, Y, X, Y, Z people. Y'all talking stupid now. Now, now you now you say, no, you're talking about no sex? You, you want to erase women from history? What, 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 what? I mean, the, 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 the mother of the wizard, the, the mother of the wizard, Harris said, what is the problem? I'm not gonna let you wipe me away and erase me away. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Whatever. I'm. I. I support y'all and everything. And but y'all just going. You're going to be going. You're going beyond the pale. You could. You're going too far. Now we're just going to do away with sex. Do away with women. I mean. Do away with men. I mean, what are you talking about? Even J.K. Rawlings, Rawlings, the mother of the wizard, Harry. That is too much. You're going too far. But see, see, she doesn't understand what evidently most pastors don't understand, many pastors don't understand, and many Christians don't understand, and the presidents don't understand. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. It's, there's an old saying, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. You give the homosexual community an inch, they're going to take 10 miles and and get mad at you if you don't like it. See? 
See, that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of abominations like this. No, they were not. I knew they were not going to be satisfied with just they 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 can uh, uh, get together without being arrested and stuff like that. No, the next thing, right after that, and and if and it's going to get like this, it's going to get worse here shortly. Right after that, they confiscating preachers' sermons down in Houston of all places. One of the buckles of the Bible Belt trying to stop preachers from preaching against homosexuality in Houston, Texas. And the lesbian married mayor was the one behind it. And and, and before you knew it, real quick, like, uh, men can go into women's bathrooms. This became a thing under President Obama. Not only that, now we got men grown, I mean, big old muscular men running against little girls in track meets. And we're supposed to accept that. That's a lie of hell. That See, this stuff, abominations like this, they are going to get out of hand real fast like. And that's why we got a mess on our hands. And that's why God loves us so much. That's why he's chastising us real good. Right now, that's why the Bible says, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. You need to be thankful for it. It's designed to save us from ourselves. You need to stop following the crowd, going along to get along, pastor, pastor's wife, want to be accepted in the community, so much so you will compromise God's word and over half of the pastors in this country have done so and they still refuse to repent. But here's the good thing about God. You can repent and God will bless you. This is what I love about God. One of the things I love about God. And I know this to be true. That you can have somebody, don't touch that back there. Get your back off of that. Because most people are not in the mood to repent. Most people have already made up their minds that they're not going to repent. But you can repent. And you can receive the blessing of repentance. You can humble yourself, pray, and seek God's face. And turn from your wicked ways. And get back to Jesus, your first love. And God will bless you. If your family does it with you, God will bless your family. If your family does it, God will bless you. If your church does it with you, God will bless you in the church. If the church does not, God will bless you. He's done this throughout uh, history. You remember Joshua and Caleb? All the other guys... Uh, didn't have faith in God, but Joshua and Caleb did, and God blessed them tremendously. Okay? So, everybody's not going to go with you. Your wife may not go with you. Your husband, you remember Lot? Lot's wife? Lot went on. Lot's wife was turned into a pillow of salt and was left behind because she wanted to keep supporting the homosexuals in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was okay. Because they were part of the fashion down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. They know they knew how to do hair and knew how to do nails and they can just tell you, look at you and tell what kind of clothes to put on, what kind of shoes and everything like that in Sodom. She missed she missed the fashion and going to the mall down in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so she looked back and turned into a pillar of uh, of salt. That's wrong with this we got a whole bunch of salt people who, who are not salty in, in the right way for God and for Jesus, but they've turned into a pillow of salt because they looked back at Sodom and Gomorrah and they loved it <clears throat> so much. They didn't want to leave it. So what's the solution? Repent? 
not only pray, not only seek God's face, not only humble yourself, but turn from your wicked ways. And not until then will God bless. And God is not playing. It's not, uh, <clears throat> He's not playing with you. That's why this plague is still going on and nobody knows how long it's going to last because people are not repenting fast enough. A few are, some are, and they're being blessed by the Lord and provided for it and everything. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, Christians, that's right, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. God hears prayer. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 through 5, here's Jesus Christ for you. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. God's churches are flourishing in this plague. Churches that belong to pastors and other and people, and disobedient to God, they are losing their candlestick. The church is going to go poof, gone, because they refuse to love the Lord and obey the Lord and do what the Lord told them to do. Dr. Leonard Ravenhill said, For this sin-hungry age, we need a prayer-hungry church. He's the one who said, the problem in the world is that the church is playing instead of praying. Now to our news segment, and I'm still dealing with the news, dealing with uh, people in the church who are dying or getting sick from the coronavirus plague to this day. To help you to understand, you don't need to be in a hurry to go back to a building. Do not be foolish. Do not let people talk you into going back to a church building right now. The plague is there ready to kill you. Remember what I said now. The plague is out to get Christians, disobedient Christians. No, no. I know you wanted the plague to be against homosexuals or the plague is against uh, people out in the world and the devil people and the goth people and all of that. No, no. The plague is, is the, this plague is designed to deal with Christians. People called by his name. I know you don't like it, but it's true. Including pastors. Many, many pastors are dying because they refuse to uh, keep the great commission and the great commandment. And we all deserve to die. In the coronavirus plague, and not only that, don't get the big head, we all deserve to go to hell. So don't get the big head now just because you're still living. Because you have not been perfect either. Nor have I. So what you need to do is make sure your heart is right with God. And be thankful you're still living. But this thing, this coronavirus plague is taking out pastors, bishops, priests, preachers, evangelists, prophets, prophetesses. Pastors and their wives and children. And so you need to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. For over 2,000 years, the church has never been about a building. Never. We have been about a building, but not the church. Uh, Dr. Richardson out of New York, I believe his last name is Richardson, uh, he made it very clear. He was offended when the president said he's going to declare our churches essential. He said the church has always been essential, and because the church is essential, we've never quit churching. What are you talking about? We don't need a building to do what the church is supposed to do. He said, I, he said I'm insulted. 
I'm offended that you would think that we, you, number one, that the church was not the church uh, without going to the building. Number two, that you have the power to tell us when to go back to church. The heck with that. He said, I don't, I don't, I didn't like that at all. And he's right. According to WKYT 17, uh, 17, according to KYT News, 17 coronavirus cases have been reported among congregants, the congregation at the Clay's Mill Baptist Church in Kentucky. According to Newsday, New York Pastor Robin Ramkinson, Ramkinson died of the coronavirus plague. According to Wiley Funeral Home in Georgia, uh, Pastor George Howard Terrell died of the coronavirus. According to KTBS, prominent Louisiana pastor, Louisiana pastor and activist John Henry James Sr. of Shreveport died of the coronavirus. According to CBS, Louisiana pastor Kendall Pierre Sr. died of the coronavirus. So don't be in a hurry to go back to the church buildings, but stay in the church. And you can do that very well with the, with the technology that we have right now that God has wrought. And you can pray at home. You can have church at home. You must remember now the church began in the home. And I, as I predicted a few years ago, I believe, I believe the church was going back to the home. I'm waiting on a wise pastor right now to say, you know what, folks? The church is going so well at home like this. Uh, we're going to do this every week, and we're going to keep the building because the building is paid for. we got enough money coming in to keep the utilities going. I will still go down to the office, my wife and I. We don't, we don't want anybody else to come down there, and I'll be preaching from the office. I'll be ministering to you from the office. I'll be taking your phone calls from the office. I'll continue to work uh, my schedule, and I'll be there for you. Uh, and we'll meet one Sunday a month when the plague is gone. That's not unusual. Churches did that for years. First and second Sunday, first and third Sunday here, and uh, third and fourth Sunday here, and so forth and so on. Okay? And we'll have a great celebration once a month or once a quarter at the building, once everything is cleared up, if the Lord ever clears it up. And if it doesn't get cleared up, we'll just keep on having church online like this. So... Let's build up the home church. All right. By way of jobs, you need a new job. Most of you need a new job. Don't get fooled by the uh, surprisingly uh, great uh, number of jobs that have come back already. Uh, many prognosticators in the in the uh, field of economy is they're saying that that's not going to continue and that most people will lose their jobs permanently so and by the way you don't want to be in this situation again anyway where your, your life is depending upon a job outside of your home outside of your family uh, so you need to get an online job or what they call a remote job. You need money to live on. And uh, I've already talked with you about downsizing, get out, getting out of expensive apartments for several reasons, getting out of expensive houses for several reasons, taking your equity and buying yourself something that you can pay for or, or at least almost pay for. I already talked with you about that. I'll get back on that later on this week. But right now we're dealing with jobs and how to get a job, a remote job, or, or an online job. Here are five more places to find remote work. I've already given you 30. Uh, if you don't have the other 30, you can get the other 30 from the other 
people who've been listening and get, get no, look on their notes. 31, workers on wheels. 32, work queue, W-O-R-K-E-W. Number 33, working nomads, working nomads. 34, axiom law. 35, oppress. That is A-P-R-E-S, oppress. All of these are dot com, I do believe. Let me repeat that list. Write it down. I'm only sharing with you five today. I've already given you 30 places to go to. To apply, and, and all of these places have multiple places where you can get a job. Uh, most of them have multiple places where you can get a job. Workers on Wheels, 31, 32, Work Q, 33, Working Nomads, 34, Axiom Law, and 35, uh, Press, A-P-R-E-S. Now, here's how to get started on your remote work journey searching for a job. Let me tell you a little bit about Miss Camille. Her bio says, back before the road called her and her husband, Camille worked for 20 years as a corporate trainer, helping hundreds of people land jobs, develop skills, and get promotions and raises and so forth. Now that she's on the road, she's doing the same things, but focused on how to find remote work for fellow travelers. Her husband, uh, Camille and her husband, they travel in a motor home, and they, they're footloose and fancy free. They don't uh, have a mortgage anymore. They don't have uh, an apartment payment or utilities or anything like that. They travel around the nation and, and the world in their motorhome. Now, they have paused that right now because of the coronavirus. But anyway, here's step number five. Write this down. Refresh your resume specifically for remote jobs or jobs online. One of the major trends I see, Camille says, as it relates to remote work is that people don't realize they need to remote work. They, they need a remote work resume. If you haven't updated your resume with your latest work experience, or if you haven't updated it with the right keywords for remote roles, then you don't have a remote work resume. Okay? This is one of the biggest reasons that your remote job search might not be working for you because, see, these people want to know, and I'm adding this part, they want to know that you you are a self-starter. There's some people who, sad to say, they got to have a supervisor to make them do their work. I feel sorry for you if you're that way. I can't help you if you are not willing to get up early like you're going to a job even though you're working from home and you don't do like the man who's on Zoom in his drawers. One lady on Zoom changing her clothes with her breasts out. You, uh, hopefully you got enough sense and decency not to do something so ridiculous and then there's some people who do this mess on purpose don't be that kind of person get up put on uh, some work clothes and and be ready to do business for the people you're working for they want to know you you're able to do that because that's the big problem that people have because they don't need employees sitting up in the with shorts on up in, with the leg up in the air and on Zoom, got the television on, and uh, three or four babies running back and forth around the house and wreaking havoc, and then the dog is following them and all kind of stuff, and you got spit up and everything and food on your clothes. They want to know that you're going to be a professional person 
and you can handle your business at home. Here's an article to help you write your remote resume. And Camille says, I offer extensive resources on creating your perfect remote work resume inside of my remote work one-on-one -on -one course. Now, you can write that down and you can go take her course. Okay. Five pre-built remote resume templates. A resume checklist and video lessons on exactly what to put in each section of your resume so that it is optimized on various platforms, leading to you being found more often. This one lesson alone has helped so many students land their perfect remote job. Your resume's got to be tight, it's got to be right, and they have to see in that resume that you've done some other things online and you've accomplished some things uh, in a remote fashion, okay? Once you have a resume that you are proud of, your confidence will go up, she says, and you'll be better positioned for step number six. So what is step number six? Step number six, start networking and telling people what kind of work you're looking for. See, if you're going to make this move from the traditional rat race life of trying to work a job somewhere and pay like five, $6,000 a month to live to living for under $1,000 a month. You need to choose what you want to do. You, you, you don't have to just have a job. I feel sorry for people, and I've, I've talked about this for years, who, people who get caught up in the rat race where they get a job they don't like and they get stuck in that job because they go into debt paying for stuff, cars and houses and all that, and they're stuck for 30, 40 years in a, in a job. You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that. You don't need to do that. That's... That's not good. That's not. That's the American way. That's not necessarily God's way. I mean, you don't enjoy your life that way. And then you go, then you get retired. You know, you go into retirement at 65. Then you want to travel around the world. That's ridiculous to me. I traveled around the world in my 20s. I thank God my daughters have traveled around the world. Now my son has traveled around the world in their 20s. That's what I taught them. Don't wait till you're 65. You got, you taking medication. You got a bag full. You have a suit full, suitcase full of medications to take. It's just rough. It's got to be rough being old and trying to travel all over the world. And even to be old and to be old and to be trying to do the RV life is, is rough. If you're old, what's wrong with 45 doing starting at 45, not 65? But anyway. Uh, do it at 35. Do it like Alyssa does it. That's, that, and by the way, I, I get all of this stuff from Alyssa. That's all I'm going to tell you. I don't want y'all trying to find them. Her and her husband, they got a little baby. They're still in their late 20s, and they, and they, and, and they, they decided to go the, the non-traditional route. They bought a used motorhome, traveled all over the world, and and worked from their motorhome, made thousands, yea, I believe millions of dollars, over a million dollars. They're millionaires now. All their student loan debt is paid, and they still, even with the little baby, they still living in the motorhome, and they can buy a house cash if they wanted to. They're debt free. They're footloose and fancy free. And they, are, you, when you see their faces, you, they they are just as happy as they can possibly be. So Alyssa, Alyssa, she's the one who has supplied me all of this information to share with you. And I appreciate her and her husband doing it. I'm not going to mention both of them because you can find them real easy if I have to mention both of them. But anyway, this is by far the easiest way to get started. 
but one of the hardest for people because they don't want to toot their own horn. And we understand that. If you're normal, you hate doing that. But but you're going to have to, once you get your resume, you got to tell people what you want to do. Don't just accept whatever is available. You do what you want. And be happy about what you're doing. Get you a job that you like or start you a business and a job or start you a blog. There are people who who write blogs regularly, right? Right on their blog regularly, make $4,000 a month. Can you put a, can you, do you have a passion about anything? Do you, are you passionate about anything? Birds? Gardening? Sewing? Certain kind of movies? Fantasy? C.S. Lewis? T.R.R. Tolkien? Tolkien. Do you have a Shakespeare? What is your passion? You can put together a blog and make two, three, four thousand dollars a month eventually if you're faithful to writing the blog and writing original content. There are books online that will teach you how to do it. Okay? Set yourself free where you can live where you want to live, do what you want to do, and have the money to do it. Here's the deal. You aren't tooting your own horn as much as you are sharing the value that you provide to people. And people are always looking for problems to be solved. Or more importantly, great employees. Side note, with a strong job market, this was written before the plague, okay? So understand. She said, with a strong job market and more remote work than ever, finding good employees is really hard these days. And what that boss wants, what what that company wants, they want somebody that once they give you an assignment, they don't have to micromanage you. These people are a blessing when you don't have to supervise them and micromanage them because what they're sending back to you is a bunch of mess. Those people, those people get fired. Those people get fired. What every boss wants is somebody, once they give you an, an assignment, once you got your marching on, they want you to march, and they want you to show up and put out over and above, over and above uh, uh, every time, and they don't want to be bothered with you. And that's a good thing. You, you are not one to be bothered with. They be a good employee. When people don't have to be looking over your shoulder and they got Zoom on you and they check it on you and, and where are you, what were you doing, and mm, it look like you waste a lot of time here. Uh, where were you at? No, no, uh, you don't want that. That's just like being at a job somewhere. It's too much. If you put yourself out there, follow through, and show dependability, Show dependability, show consistency, show faithfulness. You got to have some. You got to have character deep down on the inside to be this kind of uh, employee. You're going to be way ahead of the pack. And the and the and and the and the benefit is you you got you got you have freedom because if you do your job. You like to get your job and your work done early, and you do a great job, and you get pats on the back. Then you can go get take a break. As long as they can depend on you to get your work done, you can go out for lunch if you if if, if there's a place to go. Right, right now, there's no place to go as far as I'm concerned. You're going to be way ahead of the pack. 
Additionally, once you complete your skills inventories, inventories and your remote work resume, this will feel much easier and much more natural. Let's pray. Holy Father God, help your people who are struggling right now with uh, facing foreclosure, facing eviction notices, facing a job not coming back, people talking out of both sides of their mouth, people giving them the runaround, money not coming in from the government as promised, uh, cutting of money that was coming in, uh, Lord, we pray that you will help these people, Lord, to get right with you first and then help them to set themselves free. And Lord, uh, help them to downsize with the quickness while to move uh, away while they can from where they are uh, out of the city. And to think differently about work, and to work remotely, and to build their family up, and help them to realize that they can only build their family up, their spouse, their children. The only way they can do it is by being there with them constantly. And to us in the American way, we think that's, 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 uh, that's a terrible thing to do to be around our family all day long. But in your sight, is a good thing because we really get to know each other and, uh, and know about each other and see character traits and character flaws and we can correct things that uh, need to be corrected. So Lord, help people to think differently and to stop thinking in the traditional fashion regarding church or regarding work and uh, also regarding uh, living, uh, housing is concerned. And I pray that uh, you'll help everybody change for the good. And Lord, even if uh, everybody repents and you cause the plague to go away next year, if they did that now, they'll, they'll be better off anyway. They'll be better off anyway. And if they want to go back up to uh, high price houses and high price cars, they they can do that. But right now, I don't see that happening uh, personally, Lord. And uh, right now, uh, they need to make that move and make that change if they're not uh, uh, extraordinarily rich already. If they're rich, then they don't have anything to worry about. But, Lord, I'm talking to the 98% uh, who are not rich. Help them to make a hard, re a hard decision and not try to hold on to something that's going to be going away here soon. Uh, and understand that the government or nobody else will be able to help them with, help them to move ahead of time before they start evicting and before they start foreclosing upon them so that they can come out of this well and with something, including their dignity. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Save those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. Amen. Dear friend of mine, now if you're with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation from uh, the power of sin and from the punishment of sin in the pits of hell. First, dear friend, please understand with me before we uh, leave today that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. And so have I, and so has the Pope, and so has the Dalai Lama, and so has Joel Osteen and everybody. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand that because of our sins, you and I, we all deserve punishment in that awful place called hell, where Jesus said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. This includes physical death, where our bodies will go to a grave one day, and spiritual death in that awful place, eternal death in hell, where Jesus said, the worm, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now that's bad news. Hell is bad news. Going to hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ who preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible, the same Jesus Christ who preached more on hell than he did about heaven, Jesus Christ said these words, and here's the good news for you, John 3.16, <clears throat> for God so loved the world, <clears throat> excuse me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The phrase, for God so loved the world, means that if you are in this world, God loves you, no matter what you have done in this life. The next phrase, that he gave his only begotten son, refers to Jesus Christ. He is God's son who suffered, bled, and died on the cross by your sin cross for your sins and for my sins and uh, he was buried and rose on the third day <clears throat> Jesus Christ suffered bled and died on the cross for our sins he is the lamb of God who took away the sins of the world he died, was buried, and rose on the third day for our sins. And all we have to do is believe on him. <clears throat> our next phrase is that whosoever believeth in him. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. The phrase believeth in him means to trust in him, to depend upon him to rely on him or to have faith in him is as simple as that. Just believe in Christ. Just have faith in Jesus Christ. Depend upon Jesus Christ for your soul's salvation. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand to be saved. You don't have to give any money to the preacher to be saved. You don't have to work in a ministry at the church to be saved, none of that will save your soul. That may be good after you are saved, but it has nothing to do with your soul's salvation. So our next phrase, should not perish, refers to what? It refers to eternal punishment in that awful place called hell. And lastly, the phrase, but have everlasting life means to live eternally in heaven with God. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you see in these two verses, salvation is very simple. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Some of you might be religious, but you're not born again. You're not saved. You really don't know Jesus Christ. You think because your mother was in the church and your father was in the church and you were brought up in the church that because of your religion you're saved. <clears throat> Let me help you. If you can't remember a time you knew that you were lost and on your way to hell, 
and uh, at that point you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You met Jesus Christ. And I assure you, you will never forget meeting Jesus Christ. Have you ever trusted him as your Savior? As you look back on your life, is all what you see is uh, religion, church going, religious activity, working in the church? All the way back to as far back as you can remember? Or do you remember a day meeting Christ and believing on Christ and Christ coming into your heart and into your spirit. If you can't remember a day like that, you might not be saved because you will never forget meeting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may not remember the date as I do. I got saved December the 19th, 1979. Around 8.30 or so, 9 o'clock at night, <clears throat> in a dorm room in the Air Force in Biloxi, Mississippi. Just as clear as day in my mind. You may not remember the date, but you ought to remember meeting Jesus. He's the greatest person you'll ever meet in your life. So if you can't remember that, believe in your heart right now on the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him free gift of salvation into your heart and into your spirit and follow me in this prayer as Michael Lewis that night led me in prayer what is called the sinner's prayer I'll be glad to do that with you today so repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered bled and died on the cross for your sins was buried rose again. The Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world, including yours. Follow me in prayer. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have sinned against you. I have broken your Ten Commandments. You told me not to do it, but I did it anyway. For I have dishonored and disobeyed and disrespected my parents. I've dishonored and disrespected you by taking your name in vain. I have coveted. Uh, people and things in my heart. I have lusted after people and things in my heart. I have stolen things before. I have lied before. And as you know, Lord, I have committed many other sins. I've done evil in your sight. And Holy Father God, I know that I deserve to go to hell just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins, my failures and my faults, as I now believe with all of my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, Please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul with the free gift of salvation. And fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. And help me to turn from my evil and wicked life. <clears throat> And to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ today, 
that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, was buried and rose on the third day. Allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my new book. Download it free of charge. If you have any problems, download it. Contact my uh, technician. He's the one who put it up. And read it. The title of it is What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my dear friends, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you. Real good is my prayer. If the Lord tarries is coming and we live, by the grace of God, uh, I will be holding the standing between the living and the dead memorial prayer devotional service, 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. And then after that, I'll be preaching and teaching uh, in the Onward Christian Soldier Bible class on the subject of temptation. And we're dealing with another temptation today. And we all, contrary to what Chris, some Christians say, we all have temptations. And even in old age, we all have temptations. So uh, if the Lord will so lead you to come back for that tomorrow, feel free to do so. God bless you until then, and may I lovingly encourage you to pray without ceasing. Get your Alexa, get your phone, get your device, whatever, and program it to uh, give you a wonderful chime at the top of every hour, at the bottom of every hour, whatever, uh, however you want to do it. And uh, have that chime to remind you. You can use a timer, a kitchen timer, uh, to pray. Just whisper a prayer. Now, your flesh is not going to want to do it. You're going to have family people, family members who are not going to want to do it. The devil definitely does not want you to do it. You might feel kind of funny doing it. Just do it. And you, and you, and you unload your concerns, your burdens, your cares, your prayers, your complaints on God. You got somebody in your family you want to give them two cents, your last two cents of your mind, okay? A piece of your mind, which is all you have is a piece. Give it to the Lord. Don't say anything to them. Just pray it. Pray about them. Pray for them. And pray for yourself. And ask God to give you grace to deal with the Negroes in your family as, as things are un, being uncovered that you never heard of before because you never spent this much time with them before. Now you know. And you need to pray. So pray without ceasing, folks. Need a job? Pray and ask God for it. Confess your sins and repent first. Need money to pay something? Pray and ask God for it. No matter how you feel about it, no matter how dry it may feel and dead or whatever, it may feel like it's not even going to the center. You just pray in faith, believing. While you're praying, make sure you confess your sins. You humble yourself. You pray. You seek God's face. You turn from your wicked ways. You cannot be praying to God and you shacking up with Bo Peep or you shacking up with Sylvia. That means shacking up means somebody that you're not legally married to. 
or you homosexualizing and lesbianizing or whatever, God's not going to hear that. You're wasting your time. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to born-again Christians who are sensitive to the Spirit of God and they're willing to repent and get their hearts right with God. You pray and pray with whoever wants to pray with you. Everybody's not going to want to pray with you in your family every hour. They might pray with you, with, with you in the morning, but they're not want, they, uh, they don't want to go on that journey with you, praying every hour. But I guarantee you, oh, how can I have fun? How can I do my Netflixing uh, when I'm praying every hour? You pause the Netflix and pray and, wa- uh, and watch God speak to you. and He'll make you get up from Netflix and go do something that you've been wanting to do for uh, years, like uh, finish reading that book you got on that shelf that's so pretty behind you right now while you're doing Zoom. Or resuming a college course. Or doing something constructive. Understand, people, Netflix, Amazon Prime, that's for after you have done something. You, that's not your job. Okay, that's a relaxation time. You don't get to do that till about 8, 9 o'clock at night. If you get your work done by 5, 6, that's even better. But get your work done first. Then you do, then you have big fun. That's my philosophy of life. Get your work done, do the hard stuff first, and then have big fun. Have big fun. Get you a good meal and enjoy yourself. And I think you ought to have a Sabbath every day, every day. You ought to have two to three hours where margin that you can relax and take it easy and do what you like doing. Okay? But get something done first. Get something constructive. Apply for three jobs online if, you know, you don't have a job. Make your to-do list for tomorrow. And while you're doing all that, have a lecture to remind you every hour to pray. Just whisper a prayer. I won't take you no more than a minute. 45 seconds. I, 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 this is your assignment. I, I don't want you to just come and listen. Oh, man, I'm so blessed. My heart is so filled. I'm so encouraged. And then you go and the devil slap you upside the head at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And, and then you mad as the devil. Okay, because he will do it. Okay. I'm trying to show you a way to live with the devil can't slap you upside the head and knock you out. Pray every hour. Pray every half. Some of you are so evil, you need to pray every half hour. You know your heart, ain't, your heart is not right. You're tempted too much with so and so. And you need to pray. You're risking your life because you just got to have so and so around. Pray. Don't play anymore. Pray. I'm talking to God's people. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm not talking to you. You're the, I can't help you. I'm talking to God's people. That's right. Whatever time it is now, uh, I guess it's not quite 2 o'clock Central Time. Set your Alexa for 2, and you pray. 3, pray. That sounds so perfunctory, so mechanical, so legalistic. Well, you're not doing you're not doing any praying right now. So until you can do it when you're prompted by the Holy Spirit of God, uh, like I can, like I do it, been doing it for years. See, the Holy Spirit will prompt you to pray. That's that's too regimented for me. You don't have to do.